Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us this evening, especially those of you who are um, coming in from Seattle. I know it's nice and sunny outside, and I appreciate you spending your time uh, with me and the rest of my team as we take you through the Blackboard Grade Center. So um, the objectives for tonight's workshop are uh, to avoid, I'm going to try to help you avoid the most common pitfalls that uh, my team and I see. Uh, during the, you know, as we're working with faculty during the course of the term. Um, hopefully help you increase your efficiency in working with the Grade Center. I know it can be a complicated tool and so I'm going to try to help you increase your effi efficiency uh, with that, with all the tools in it. And then finally, um, make sure that you're aware of the student's view of the Grade Center so that you can also help your students troubleshoot um, when you get those questions about, hey, I don't see your feedback or I don't understand um, where, where to find my grade, uh, those questions that we frequently get. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through my process uh, for preparing my courses to teach. Um, and then if you have anything that you would like to see, I want to give you an opportunity uh, to see or have those questions answered. So this is your workshop, um, although I have lots of tips and tricks to share with you. Um, I know that you probably have specific reasons why you're here, and so if you have questions uh, or anything that you'd like me to show you, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, use your microphone and share them or type them in the chat. And uh, Whitney is has so kindly volunteered to uh, add them to our whiteboard here, so you can kind of see how Collaborate works as well. So, what would you like to see? If you had your way, what would you like to see? I have I have a need to better understand the column organization area where it has okay. to weight total total and and as you add new things into the uh, to be graded, they'll go all the way to the bottom, and so I'm I'm constantly shifting moving the columns in different areas to adjust week per week. And I think there's probably a more efficient way to do that. Yeah, so we're actually going to spend a lot of time in the column organization section. So as I go through there and I kind of show you how I use it and what I do, if you have any additional questions, please do feel free to um, type them in the chat or just jump right in and ask. Okay, thanks. Anything else from Sally or who else do we have? Um, Scott or Ron, anything you'd like to see? For me, just an overview again would be helpful. It's been a while since I did the Blackboard Basics and uh, with grading coming up, uh, a refresher would be great. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm with Ron on that. Um, just to, here just to kind of refresh and to get some new ideas, really not, nothing no specific questions at this point, but uh, again, just to get a better feel for for it. Great. Okay. Well, hopefully, um, this will give you a, enough of an overview. I, I'm not actually going to go through the grading process. Um, I'm just going to kind of tell you some of the things that I, some of the tools I use to be more efficient in grading. Um, but if you have specific questions about grading, that's something um, anyone on my team would be, including myself, would be happy to uh, follow up with you about um, and, and take you through that process as well. So uh, with that being said, let's uh, jump into uh, one of my Blackboard courses so we can demo some of those tips. So just give me one second. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so you should all see the student orientation course. This is uh, a course that CityU offers for students, uh, CityU students who um, it's actually available for any student who decides that they're interested in it, but it is also um, a, mostly available for those students who 
are, have never um, taken an online course or are uncomfortable, unsure about uh, about what that might mean for them, this is an opportunity for them to get to know um, how CU uses Blackboard, the tools that we use, the requirements that we have, and get familiar with it before uh, they have to do anything high stakes in their own course. So the first thing that I do when I open up my course for the first time is I add my student preview account to the course. And I'm going to show you how I use that student preview as we go through this demo. Um, but that is my first step always. It is a great way to explore your course as a student and really understand the student's perspective of the information, the content, your communications within the course. So to add your student preview, you're going to go up to that icon, um, the eye icon in the right hand corner. And just click on it and you'll see that yellow banner that says I am in student preview mode. I'm not going to do anything with it just now, but I wanted to add that user to the Grade Center so that I can use it in some of my preparations. So it's added. I'm going to exit the preview. And you'll get prompted with this box that says, do you want to delete all the preview user data or do you want to keep it? And you want to keep it in this case because I'm actually going to use it to make sure that my Grade Center is calculating correctly. So I'm going to change that to keep all preview user data and say continue. So now we're going to go down to the control panel and go ahead and enter the full Grade Center. So this is my, my first view of the Grade Center for this term. Um, I'm going to really check it out to make sure that it is set up the way that I want. So Hi, one Aaron. of the first things that I, um, hello? Yeah. Hi, Aaron. Aaron, it's Jeff. I just had a quick question. I have my other, I have another monitor open and I, I click the student preview on a current class that I'm teaching. And just to see about that one panel, about the preview settings, and all of it's grayed out uh, so is that something that I can uh, adjust it a little later or is there something I can do now to, to be able to set that at keep the preview user and all that? Uh, you're not able to toggle between the options? No, it just comes up. Um, it has student preview mode is on in an orange uh, bar and then I have exit preview and settings and then when I click settings like you did, there's no... Um... I didn't actually click settings. I clicked exit student preview. Oh, you did? Okay. That's where... Yeah. And okay, that's you're where right. I got okay. the option. Got it. There it is. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So um, for me, uh, I don't know what size monitor you all are working on at home. Um, a lot of times I'm working on a really small laptop. And so I like to make sure that I'm maximizing the space that I have working in the Grade Center because lots of times we have, you know, 10, 15 columns that we're working with just in assessments alone. So there's a neat trick that you can do if you hover next to the navigation, you'll see this little gray bar and arrow appear. And if you click on that gray bar, it's going to collapse the navigation and give you more of a full screen view of the Grade Center. You can always return it by clicking again on that gray bar, that little arrow that you see to bring the navigation back. But that gives me a little bit more room to work with. And the first thing after I expand uh, the Grade Center view is I go directly to, uh, I think it was uh, Scott or maybe one of you mentioned um, wanting to talk about the column organization. That is the first place I go because one of the most common things that we see uh, with uh, faculty pitfalls in the Grade Center is hidden columns that they're not aware of. So here's a view of all of the columns in the Grade Center and you can see that I have one, two hidden columns. So they're grayed out. They're actually hidden from me, an instructor, in the Grade Center view. My students, however, may very likely be able to see those columns. So I'm going to make sure that I unhide those so I can see whether my students see them or not and know whether I even want to keep them in the Grade Center. So check the box next to them and select Show Selected Columns and then make sure anything, any changes that you make in this, uh, in this view, you click Submit to uh, keep them. We're going to be back here in just a second. I know there's a lot more information on this page, but I just want to make sure that those hidden columns are unhidden first. And then I'm going to take a closer look at my Grade Center. So now I know I see all of the columns that are 
that are available in the Grade Center. And as I scroll across, I can see a couple issues. So first of all, I have these red slashes next to two of my columns. That means, does anybody know what that means? Ideas? Well, I will tell you, that means my students can't see them. So my students aren't able to see those two assessments with my course, and they are uh, worth, whoops, I did not mean to do that. And they are worth points, so I want to make sure that my students see them. So I'm going to click that edit menu next to the column and say, hide from students on off. So you're just toggling that option on and off. So that one is now visible to my students and so is the collaborate recording. So all of my columns are now visible to me and my students. So that's a good start. And then the second issue that I see is that I have a couple duplicate columns. And this is another common issue that we see within uh, the Grade Center. Um, sometimes those duplicate hot columns are hidden because we're not really sure what to do with them. Um, but it's really best to get rid of them. So you make sure that they're not going to complicate your calculations and they're not going to confuse students. So I have two weighted totals. Um, and I definitely don't want that. And I also have two total columns. So there's one here and there's one up here in the front. Um, I know that for this particular course, I'm going to be using a weighted total. So I actually don't need the total column. Um, I'm not using points. I want to uh, calculate the students' grades using a weighted total. So I technically don't need either of those total columns, but I'm going to keep one just for my reference. Can you explain so, again the difference between weighted total and just total of points? Sure. So the total column is just going to keep a running calculation of the grades that are entered within each of these cells. So I believe that there are 700 points, 600 or 700 points in this class. So that total is going to, as students complete assignments, it's going to say you have um, 200 out of the possible 250 points. You have 300 out of the possible 320 points. Um, and then once they complete everything, it'll be calculating their total out of the total points possible in this course, uh, which would be, you know, 665 out of 700 points or something like that. Okay, the weighted quite... total, I'm sorry? I have, a question. I have a question about that. Yeah. Um, I seem to remember that that used to appear in the, the total column, but the, one of the classes I'm looking at now, it just has a total number. It doesn't have, like, for example, 59 out of 100 or 75. It just has 59. So a student looking at it wouldn't know a 59 out of how many total. Right. So the students should know how many total points are in the course. We'll we'll see the student's perspective in, in just a in just a second. They'll be okay. able to see. Um, yeah. What the, thank you, Whitney. So students do see the the total point value. Um, it does not show here in the grade center as like uh, out of, 650 out of, out of how many? 700 or whatever. Um, okay. But you can, if I hover over the total, it will tell me. So there's 620 possible points in this course. Um, and so oh, okay. whatever was entered in here, I would know it was out of the 620 points. Okay, you said to hover Weighted over? Total, I'm sorry? When you said yeah, hover. hover over it and it will give you some additional, you can see it kind of appear in the gray bar just above uh, the grade center, the columns. Do you see that? Uh, I see the finger. And yeah, so if you look over towards the left, just above where it says first name and group. First name, oh, okay. See so yeah. Oh, wow, okay, off. thank you, thank you. Okay, and I didn't look far enough to the left there, thanks. <laughs> no problem. And then the weighted total, on the other hand, is um, where you apply a percentage, a certain weight, to an assignment an assessment or a group of assessments. 
So, and we'll take a closer look at this in a second, but I would say all of my discussion board call, uh, assessments are worth 20% of the student's grade, while the one paper that they have to complete is worth 25% of their grade. And it's going to calculate, again, as a, as a running total. So as the um, student completes assignments and you grade it, it's going to say out of the current possible points available, this is your weighted total. Um, but it is adding those additional parameters over top of uh, whatever the point value for that particular assessment is. So we'll look at that more closely in just a second. Uh, but I, like I was saying, I was going to uh, delete my total column because I only want one of those. The weighted total, I have two of those, but one of them likely has calculations while the other one is probably something that copied over during um, the copy from a master or um, somewhere along the design process. So I'm going to show you a way, an easy way to figure out which of those columns um, you should delete and which one you should probably leave alone. Um, so I'm going to leave those for right now. But I also know that, um, again, maximizing the space within the Grade Center, there are some of these columns that I just don't need. Um, I, don't, I do want to see their last access date, so I'm going to leave that. But I don't need their username. Their names are plenty of information for me. So I'm going to hide that from my view just to get a little more space in the Grade Center. I also don't need their student IDs. All their names are pretty um, unique, so I'm not going to get any of them confused. So I'm also going to hide that ID. And then they are all available, so I also don't need that column. And you can see as I um, remove those columns that I don't need, I'm getting more and more room in the Grade Center, which gives me an easier kind of one glance at how students are doing, what's complete, what's to what's coming up and or incomplete um, so I can move forward or I can get a better perspective uh, from this one screen. So that's as cleaned up as I can get it right now. So I'm going to go back to that column organization and take a closer look at what's actually going on in each of those uh, columns. So this view tells you this is the column name. Um, you can pretty much ignore the grading period. We don't use grading periods here. The category, so this is going to be important for me because I want to use categories in my weighted total. And I can see some issues already. There are some that don't have uh, categories. So they are probably not calculating into my weighted total. So I'm going to check those two that don't have categories and make sure I add them. Uh, I can get the menu to pop up. I should be seeing all of the categories, but I'm not. Hmm. I do not know. Oh, here. That's why. Um, so I'm going to change the category to, um, I want it to be other, because that's what I know I'm using in my weighted total um, from last time I taught it. If you don't know that, that's something you can easily check. And like I said, we'll be looking at the weighted total in just a little, a little while, a little bit closer. So I've updated those two categories. Otherwise, everything looks pretty good. Good. All my discussions are in the discussion category because I'm going to group those together, so that's what I want to see. Uh, I can see all of my due dates if I've set those, and I have. So um, I can see when all of my assignments are due, except I'm missing a due date here for the Collaborate recording. And I want my students to know what that due date is, so I'm going to go and set that um, date for them make a note to myself to change that. I unfortunately can't change it from this screen, but I can change it from uh, the full Grade Center view. The date created, this comes in handy with that weighted total issue. So I told you I had two weighted totals, and the oldest weighted total column 
is probably the one that has my calculations in it. I would say is the one that has my calculations in it. So I can see that one uh, was created on April 14th and one was created on April 20th. So I'm going to get rid of that last weighted total column. I can't delete it from this view, but I'm gonna make a note to myself to delete it from the full grade center view. So that doesn't confuse my students either. And then lastly, I have an overview of all of the points within the course. And I'm using a weighted total, and my approach to using a weighted total is every assessment is set to 100. Um, it's 100 percentage points. And um, then I apply the weights to that 100 percentage points or group of um, assessments. So I can see here in module two that that 20 point value, that's going to throw off my weighted total. And that's something that I definitely want to change to be set to 100. So module two, going to make a note to myself to change that to um, 100 points. So I have a couple things that I need to correct in the other view, but while I'm here, um, what you want to keep in mind is the order in which your columns appear is the default view that your students are going to see them in. So they will see the total first, or they'll see the, the total city U uh, four-point scale, and then the introductory assignment, module two, and, and so on and so forth. I like to put my grade center in chronological, um, it, it put the, the columns in chronological order so that um, by due date. So students see what's due next at the very top. Um, and then I also see what they're working on and what's due uh, furthest to the left and that helps me kind of manage my work. So I can see um, that I have a couple issues where things are out of order here. Um, assignment one is due April 23rd, so you can take these little um, toggles to the left and drag that column into the order in which it should be. Uh, you can also, if you have lots of columns that you're working with, up in the upper right hand corner there is a menu which oh that's the grading periods I guess I thought I could use that to reorder the columns that's weird oh here there are my columns. So there's this little arrow at the very top where I can see a list of all of my columns and I could uh, also bump them up and down. So I could take that and move it up if I want to do it that way, if there's a lot of rejiggering that I need to do. But it's actually easier for me because here I can see uh, when everything is um, due. And so it is actually quiz one that I wanted to drag up. Um, I know the collaborate recording is due right around the group assignment activity, so I'm going to keep that where it is. And then May 7th and July 1st, everything else looks in order. The last thing I'm going to do um, is, again, going to add a little bit of extra room to my grade center. These columns at the very top are, um, yeah, that it you're definitely right. That can be handier than dragging and dropping, which sometimes can be get all wonky too. Um, but I don't need my students' first names. I know them pretty well by last name, so I don't need to see that all the time in the Grade Center. So I'm going to drag that down below the frozen column line. So the frozen column means those columns are always visible as you scroll to the right um, or the left. And I think the last name is enough to see, so that'll free up some additional space for me as well. So that's all the changes I can make from the screen. I know there's a couple things I need to adjust on the next screen, uh, but I'll go ahead and submit those changes. So my columns have been reordered and um, my categories have been applied, and now I can address 
the couple issues that I saw. So I needed to change the date on the collaborate recording. So if I edit this column, I can reset the due date. Hi, Erin, I have a question. Date. Yeah. What's My that? question is just, <clears throat> I'm a little confused about what students can see and what they can't see, and under what mm -hmm. circumstances we should use one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of use one and the other, in terms of what? Um, well, I'm not sure. When I'm when I'm in Blackboard, I'm I'm just not generally sure um, what students can see or what only I can see, and and are there any guidelines around when you should be using which one? What are some of the criteria? Or it might be a little bit off topic, but oh no, you're fine. Um, so. One thing, that student preview account that I was talking about is really going to help you understand what students can see. And I, after I make these adjustments, I'm going to go in and show you exactly what students see in terms of the Grade Center. Uh, but another thing to keep in mind is that anything, so any screen like this that provides information um, about other students uh, that doesn't seem like a student should have access to it, they don't. So they can't see, they do not have access to this screen in any way. They cannot see uh, the grades, uh, the assignments of other students. Um, those are all uh, protected. Uh, another way to think about it is, um, where is my pointer? Hold on one second. There we go. Um, if I expand the menu again, Anything below the course menu, so this course management area, students don't see that. None of these links here, students do not have access to that. But I'll show you exactly what they see in terms of the Grade Center in just a second. So um, you can see my frozen column. I just see their last names now when I scroll across. Um, I fixed my collaborate date. I know I needed to check my weighted total, so I was going to delete this one. This was the old one. So another, um, actually, tip to share is you can delete columns if they are not linked to anything. So this weighted total isn't linked to anything, so I have this delete option. If I try to delete this module 4 discussion board, I am not able to delete it, and that is because it is linked to a discussion board that has been tagged for grading. If I wanted to get rid of this column, I would need to find the discussion board, which is Module 4 Discussion. Uh, I would need to find that discussion board and delete it, and it will prompt me when I go to delete that discussion board uh, to say, are you, you know, especially if students have participated, are you sure you want to delete the column associated with this and all of students' work? And then you can say yes or you can say no. Uh, I would say never delete something if a student has already participated in it. Um, but if you need to get rid of a column that's linked to an assignment, you have to actually delete the assignment first. And then the column will disappear as well. So I'm going to delete this weighted total. And then I'm going to double check my actual weighted total by editing the column information. So here we see that my weighted total is set up. It equals 100%. And I have a combination of categories. So this is category discussion. So that means that was from this area down here and includes, let me just actually take this off so you can see. Um, if I highlight discussion over here, I can see discussion includes all of these items listed below. So that category encompasses all of my discussion boards and I knew that from that uh, manage column organization view as well. So. Once you have that highlighted, you can use the arrow to pull it across and assign it a weight. 
based on what your syllabus says, right? So as I'm setting up this weighted total, I'm referencing my syllabus to make sure that these percentages match what I say I'm going to grade them on in my syllabus. Um, so this was the other category, which included the group work and the collaborate session that I needed to adjust the category for. And then these two columns are from the top here. So they're just individual assessments uh, that have percentages of their own. So you just want to make sure that it equals 100%. And then click Submit to save any changes that you made. Are there any questions about the weighted total column? at all. Okay. Okay. Um, the, oh, the last thing that I do, so I feel like I have my grade center, actually, I was going to hide this from students because that's not how their grade is calculated, but it's a good check for me. Um, the last thing that I do when I think everything is ready to go is I use that, so this is my preview account that I added. It's not one of my student accounts. I go ahead and I enter grades for every assignment. And as I enter them, I should see things changing. So my um, total grade with the City U scale is showing 4.0. That seems pretty good. Uh, the total points is 300. And then at the back, I have my weighted total is 200%, which that does not seem right because you wouldn't have a 200% as your grade. Um, so, so I know something's off. Does anybody know what I've missed? Any guesses? going down as I go across. Well, it is, remember I was supposed to change the module to uh, point value? It was 20%, or I'm sorry, it was 20 points when it should have been 100. So that is the result of um, that tells me that something isn't calculating right. And I know that I made a note to change this one and I neglected to do it. So I'm gonna edit that and make that change. Hundred. Click submit. And let's see if it fixed. It's fixed. So basically, uh, module two, the discussion board, was worth 20 points. And I gave the students 80 extra credit points for completing it. So that's why they were getting 140% uh, grade. Uh, because of all that extra credit. So that's how I use the student preview account one way I use it is to double check that my grade center is calculating correctly. And you don't have to enter 100%. You can throw in other numbers to really try to make sure that those calculations are working the way that they should before your students catch you. <laughs> um, it's the worst when your student says, hey, I don't think your grade center is correct. And you have to try to figure out what's going on. So this is a great way to catch some of those little easy mistakes uh, before they have an impact on the student's perspective. So I feel like I have that pretty much in a good place. So I am going to jump back into the student preview and see what my students are going to see now. So here we are in the student preview. Again, um, Ron, you can see I don't see that control panel part. I don't have access to the same grade center views that you do. Where I go to see the grade center is my grades as a student. And here I can see all of those columns that I made available. So there's the city you scale at the very top, like I left it. 
and the order in which I um, organize those columns is how they appear. The students can also see uh, when, I'm sorry, the due date is underneath the name of the assignment and then the point value. So as Whitney was saying, here you see uh, I got 100 points out of a possible 100 points. And at the bottom, I see that 100%. But I would know how many points are in the, in the course. Um, the other thing that you can see here is if you have all of your rubrics visible, attached and visible to students. So I only have one uh, written assignment in this course, and so it's the only thing that has a rubric. And I can see right here that it is visible to my students. They can open it and check out the grading criteria before they complete the assignment. So that's another good check to have. Any questions about the student view? No. No? Good. OK. Moving right along. OK, so I'm going to exit the student preview. And the last couple things that I wanted to share with you were um, I'm kind of taking you through all the steps that I take before a class starts. Um, after the class is underway and students are completing assessments, um, there's a couple additional things uh, that I like to do. So for one, I use needs grading quite heavily. Um, because a lot of times I will have multiple, multiple assignments being due on the same day. Uh, or not on the same day, but within the same week, and maybe I'm not grading them until the following week. So needs grading is going to be um, an aggregation of all of the things that your students have submitted. So you'll see here we only see two assignments, and it's the same assignment. But if these students had um, submitted discussion boards, if they had completed the group activity, um, I would see all of those assessments in this one place. And I click on the user's name to open what they've um, submitted or the activity that they completed, and I grade it from there. And it will, as I click Submit after grading them, it will move me to the next um, assessment regardless of what it is. So for some of you that might be confusing, you might want to grade all of your assignments first and then grade all of the discussion boards together so that um, maybe that helps you with um, equality in your grading, making sure that you are um, grading students equally. Um, but for me, it just seems really efficient to help me plug through all the uh, assignments so I don't have to work through individual um, grading columns. Um, the other thing that I like to do after I have, um, actually while I'm grading an assignment, if you have a really large course, or yeah, a really large um, class of students, um, and I know that I'm not going to be able to grade all of them within the same day, a lot of times I will actually hide that column from students while, so hide from students while I grade. And that way I don't have some students emailing me about with questions about their grade before I've even finished grading because I might want to go back and make adjustments. Um, so a lot of times I will hide that column, complete my grading, and when I'm all done and ready for students to see it, I will turn it back on so they all see it at the same time. After I've completed grading and I don't need to see that column anymore, I will download all of their assignments and save them in a file uh, with my feedback and the Grade Center. This is just my record keeping strategy. It's not something that you necessarily need to do. It's just what I like to do. Uh, but I'll download all of their assignments. This is also a great tool if you're going to be traveling and you want to grade their papers offline, you can download all of their assignments, uh, grade them all in Word, and then um, when the next time you're online, attach them back for students. Uh, but I'll download those, I'll save them in a file, and then I'll actually hide this column from myself. Again, just maximizing space within the Grade Center, so that's hide from instructor view. 
And then that way I know that column's done. I don't need to worry about it anymore. I can move, I can focus on the, the rest of the assignments that are in the course. Uh, the other thing I wanted, and we're running short on time, so I'm going to wrap up here in a second. Um, the other thing I wanted to make you aware of, again, if you have a large course and you are trying to um, kind of help students along, check in on them, uh, what you can do is use this filter option um, to target where students might have missed an assignment. So, um, or miss, you know, maybe they're falling behind on discussion boards or whatever it might be. Uh, you can filter down and uh, get those students that you want to contact and reach out to and see what might be going on. So let's say um, I know I have a selection of students that have missed an assignment. So I'm going to select assignment and I only want to see those students that um, have not attempted the assignment. And then, so it's Michelle and Whitney, and I can check off their names, and I can easily email selected users and say, hey, you know, I noticed you didn't complete this assignment. Um, is there anything I can do to help you along? What might be going on? Um, and, you know, reinforce, uh, help reinforce my students and maybe give them the little push that they need to uh, keep moving forward. So um, those are... The majority of my tips, um, when everything is completely done and the Grade Center uh, is full, I've finished all of my grading, the class is done, I will download a copy of my Grade Center and save it with all of my student files as a reference for me. Um, I have students contact me um, looking for examples of their work um, or, you know, maybe they need it for a portfolio going forward or maybe my supervisor has a question for me. Um, I can easily pull up those documents and, and that's just um, something that I've gotten in the habit of doing and it's uh, kind of helped me out along the way. So those are my tips, those are my tricks. Um, are there any questions before we hand it back to Ekaterina? So we'll be able to contact you uh, personally with email with some additional questions as we uh, advance to this next level. Oh, definitely. Let me um, put up my contact information for you. Um, there's my personal email and my phone number. And then uh, if you are in a hurry and you need uh, immediate feedback, you definitely want to contact bbsupport at cityu.edu. Um, we have a great team and um, someone will get back to you really quickly. Uh, with an answer and everybody is equally versed in uh, the Grade Center and happy